Without being chosen in the 2019 draft, the Toronto rookie, who was beginning to show his talent and strength, lived a whole odyssey to be able to play in the NBA. The night of the draft, all his family and friends, about 40 people, had gathered at his home. It was June 21st, 2019, the date for which Terrence had worked all his life. On that day, he hoped to be drafted so that he could begin to fully manage his dream of existence, to play in the NBA. I was really looking forward to hearing my name in the draft, said Terrence Davis, a senior player, fourth year, full college, at the University of Mississippi after the celebration. He was not badly off on the way there. He ended his college days in the second best position in the conference in which he played, Southeastern. But his name still hadn't found much resonance among the various NBA radars that tracked the formative competitions. In fact, Davis had not been invited to the pre-2019 draft rally in Chicago. Can you imagine the disappointment of that boy? But we're going back even further. Davis was a multi-sport athlete who made a name for himself on the football field, and if you asked his friends' coaches or teammates, they would all have told you that he would choose football as the sport he should focus on for college recruiting. Davis saw himself as a six-foot wide center receiver with long, huge arms who could catch anything that came his way. Why wouldn't he stand out there? At the same time, although between his younger years and his senior years, he was ranked the 40th best shooting guard in the nation. So although he wasn't exactly a great candidate for his position, he was attracting attention for it. He had to choose between football and basketball and, to everyone's surprise, he chose basketball. His father encouraged him to choose basketball because he knew it would be the biggest challenge he would ever face. So with only one offer of a conference school scholarship, he took it and committed to Ole Miss before his senior year began. When he arrived at Ole Miss in his first year, nothing was guaranteed for him on the team and he learned that the hard way. He only played about six minutes per game that year and several times he didn't play at all, which wasn't easy for him and he even said in an interview that he wondered at the time if he had chosen the wrong sport. Today we realize that he didn't. Eventually, he was spotted at some minor event for players who were finishing their student term with certain aspirations, such as the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. Normally, NBA franchises show a very relative presence and interest in these types of smaller events since the most talented players do not spend four years in college. David had just made 15.2 points per game in his last season, something that hadn't been completely overlooked in the offices. It didn't sound much like the NBA draft, but he had received an invitation to the G League's elite camp. The congregation would bring together certain youngsters with more than a likely future in the NBA's minor league and, hopefully, some residual minutes with the seniors through a dual contract. It was a start Terrence would not miss. I felt like the gates of heaven were opening up for me. This was just an invitation. Someone had been injured and I had been called in as a replacement. My agent called me and told me about the invitation. I went there until the day before it all started, Davis said in statements collected a few days ago prior to the night. His name was the last one. He had bounced in of the elite camp and he didn't even have a t-shirt with his name on it waiting for him since it was a very last minute relay. Few had seen him play and there were only G League scouts in front of him. But in the second five on five drill, Terrence went to 24 points in 22 minutes. It was that performance that earned the now Toronto Raptors shooting guard one of five invitations that event awarded him for the NBA pre-draft camp. Yes, he had made it. He would rub elbows with some of the country's most promising youngsters at the pre-draft camp which would be held in the contemporary tradition at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Then, in the two training matches he was able to play, he averaged 15 points and 57.1 field goal percentage. Not only did he receive attention from the scouts for such credentials, but his hands were the largest on a school base since the 2010 edition, reaching almost 11 inches, 10.75. Overnight, Terrence Davis had gone from being a minor league meet, or even thinking about taking up another trade, to receiving training invitations from the Hawks, Timberwolves, Suns, 76ers, Jazz, Kings, Bullets, Nets, Mavericks, or even the Warriors finalists. As his agent recognized, he had gotten just what he was looking for, to take advantage of his big break. Events seemed to be progressing according to the best of the scripts. However, on June 21st, 2019, came the first setback in his adventure to become a professional. Like other now active players before him, he was not selected by any team in the draft. The 60th pick had passed and no one had bet on blowing his name into the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, and his staff in the second round. Terrence was then at home in Mississippi, with his house full of relatives waiting for him to be drafted, but a tremendous disappointment and shame began to take hold of him. 
I'm shaking. I'm not crying, but you can hear the tremor in my voice. Family, here's the thing. A few teams offered me a two-way contract. I told them no. I think I deserve more than a two-way deal. All those kids who got picked tonight, they'll have to go through the summer league just like me. God, this isn't the end of my story, it's just the beginning. He was able to tell those who had met him at home to encourage and congratulate him. Well said and done. Removed from the 2019 draft, his next step was the Summer League. The Denver Nuggets offered him the opportunity to join their summer team just a few days after the draft. He accepted, rejecting similar calls from Golden State, Toronto, or Memphis. In his debut with the Colorado Colors, Terrence Davis went to 22 points, 8 out of 13 in shots, 5 out of 7 in 3-pointers, and even grabbed 5 rebounds, playing also a good game in defense. He didn't have to wait any longer. That same night in early July, he received the offer from Toronto, which offered him a guaranteed contract for the 2019-20 season. I swear I told my agent that this was a joke. It happened so fast. I thought it couldn't be real. This is real. This is serious, my agent would tell me. I was the only player not drafted who signed a guaranteed contract for the entire summer league, he said. Despite not being picked in the draft, Terrence Davis is making a remarkable start with the Raptors this season. 15.5 minutes, 6.8 points, 2.1 assists, or 61% in throwing effectiveness are part of his credentials. He's got all the talent in the world. He can play in this league. He's explosive, strong, and competes very well. I didn't expect him to do all this. He can shoot very well, and he's also very athletic. In Toronto, we have a history of picking guys like Freddie, Van Vliet, Pascal, Siakam, or Norm Powell. Our scouts have done a great job with these guys, said Nick Nurse, Raptor coach. But Davis's is, isn't the only success story outside of a non-draft pick. It's much like what happened to Fred Van Fleet, who was not picked in the 2016 draft and is now an outside player in the Eastern Conference and even received a vote to be MVP of the past finals. Davis retweeted a message Van Vliet had posted on Twitter before experiencing the same situation during his 2016 turn. He was in front of all his people, like Davis, thanked everyone for their support, and assured them that this was just the beginning of his story. And so it was that Van Vliet and Davis ended up sharing a team in the elite. And the doors are opening for those who know how to wait. Like the one that won Davis a two-year contract and just under a million dollars, 898,310 a year. Of course, his story is worthy of a miniseries, and it will inspire future youngsters not to give up until they get NBA minutes. But what was it that Davis did that baffled everyone and stirred up the hornet's nest? Well, he asked the teams in the second round not to recruit him. Can you believe that? He did it by turning his back on the biggest dream of any basketball player, but betting on his own safety. The next day, he got a call from his Ole Miss coach, Kermit Davis, who asked him if he was sure he had made the right decision. And Davis answered yes, with great confidence. His goal at that time was very clear. He would play so well in the summer league that one team would offer him a guaranteed contract instead of a two-way contract. Two-way contracts are what most second-round players receive from the teams and means they spend half their time playing with the NBA team and the other half with the G League team's affiliate. Many things had to go right for this plan to work, but he was confident in his own ability and when the Nuggets offered him a spot on the summer league team, he took it without hesitation. Even in the few months between the end of college season and the start of the summer league action, you could see that Davis had improved a lot and did exactly what he planned to do by becoming a standout in the summer league with several great performances. By the end of the Summer League, he had attracted the interest of several teams, including such contenders as the Nuggets, Sixers, Celtics, and the Warriors. But all those teams hesitated to give him the guaranteed contract he wanted, so when the Toronto Raptors came and offered him what he wanted, he took it without hesitation. Davis is really one of the best stories of the season so far. He flew way under the radar, took one of the biggest risks possible at the time of the draft, and executed his high-risk, high-reward plan to perfection. Don't you think so? We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out some of the videos on the screen that we're sure you'll love.